Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to use the scroll saw and cut out this nice tree of life pattern on three quarter inch oak. I actually thought this was pine, but when I sanded it all down and cut it, I think it's, it's actually oak now, so it's quite a heavy and quite a hardwood. So this will be a first for me cutting out on oak. We've got our pattern there, it measures in 21 inch, obviously by 21 inch. We put it down on this recycled table. This was a tabletop to start off with. And I've just basically just cut it down. You can still see the curve of the table there. And I place my carbon paper underneath, stick it down with some nice painter's tape, just stop it moving about. And literally just draw over it. It takes a matter of five minutes to draw around it all. That way we can use that template over and over again. Normally on scroll saw projects, you would line all your wood with the painter's tape, like so, and spray some glue on and actually stick your paper to it and literally just cut straight through the paper. But I want to save this for another day. So we're going to use a scroll saw. We might come back in the near future and actually route this one out next time. But for now, it's going to be a scroll saw pattern. So there it is on our wood. All nicely done. Get a nice fresh piece of carbon paper. And there it is. You can just see from that. Seems to be a bit dark today. I do apologise. I don't know what's going on here. Right, there we go. You might just make out from that. We've got our pattern there. Is that any better? Right, well, that's left to do. It's a funny, funny day today, to be honest, with the, uh, the weather outside. So we've transferred it all with our carbon paper. Now we're basically going to cut out all these sections here, all the inner sections. So take your time just to mark off the ones that you do want to remove. Just so you don't go away, come back and start cutting out the main tree itself. Now obviously I've got to get a blade into these sections. Yeah, that's about it, isn't it? We'll find one or two that we've probably missed on the way round. So obviously I've got to get into here, so we need to drill some pilot holes, and that's a simple case of drilling a hole. For me personally, the bigger the hole I can drill, the better. Just makes it a lot easier to pass my blades through. I will be using a Pegasus spiral blade today. Pegasus number five. To cut these out. They cut, it's ideal for big projects like this, because they will cut in any direction. But you can also use pinless blades, like so, and pin blades, they come on your more commoner saws, either one, because it's there's nothing too technical here, this blade, pin blade will more or less fit into most of these smaller sections, and we've just noticed a couple more there that we need to sort out. Once we've cut all these pieces out, we will cut out the outer circle, and then we'll get a Dremel with a sanding drum on, and just give it a nice bit of shaping and stuff. And that should be more or less it for this little project. We're not going to use any paint on it. No resin in between or anything like that. So it's going to be a simple case of cutting it all out. And then we'll see what it's like at the end. Right, we'll set up our Pegasus number 5 spiral blade in the scroll saw. Just before that, we will drill all our pilot holes. <laughs> Right, you can more or less see from that, I've cut two out already. It's definitely not pine as this wood, but it's cutting nice enough. Quite thick and a quite slow process. So we, we'll do three or four of these little cuts and basically it's going to be the same procedure. So we'll show you a few, but I'll start off in real time. And then obviously we'll just speed things up a bit because it is uh, basically the same thing. Okay, let's cut a few of these out so you can see.
Right, there's all our sections nicely cut out. It's a little bit more difficult than I thought. One, because it is oak. And I'll be honest with you, I'm guessing it's oak. Woods is just not my thing. But I don't know, because I had this on the back. Maybe we should have sanded the back down as well. It was quite hard to push it on the actual table of the scroll saw. But we got round and we didn't really have any, any issues that we can complain about. So slowly, slowly on that one. So just before we cut it all out, I do want to take the full circle out. You can see our line there that's ready to cut out. We just follow that line all the way around. And I'll just cut it out on a scroll saw again. I think if I do one of these in the future, I would literally cut the circle out first. It was just a little bit awkward turning this one on my little 16 inch scroll saw at the back there. But just before we do cut it out, I want to use a router and just at the edges here of each section, where the branches meet the circle, I just want to put a little cut in there, about three millimetres deep. And when we come to shape it, it, just make it a little bit easier, go up to the edge, and hopefully the little bits will pop out and give us a nice straight edge all the way around. You'll see what I mean as we do it. We are going to get a sanding drum on a flexi cable. Excuse me, there's a box of something gone. Something like that, just cheap eBay specials. And once that's spinning around nicely, we're going to use that to do a lot of shaping and at the edges here and because we have gone around with the router those edges will just pop off nicely so we'll do that quickly i've got my cnc bit just little cnc bits nothing fantastic and i've set it up in the router just there and you can just about see the tip there that's deep enough i've done a little sample one down there in the bottom right hand corner so i'm just going to do the full circle of this at the edges here and then we'll put that away and then it will go back to cutting out the circle. And then we've got a lot, a lot of shaping to do and sanding down. Right, we made it all the way round. Now, it's not the best cut in the world for me. I'm more of a router than a scroller. But that's what sanding machines are for and sanding drums. And we're certainly going to use a lot of them on this project. Remember, we want to round off all these edges of the trunk and all the branches. So, a lot of sanding down to do and playing about. But if you can see the edges here, look, it's not perfect. And it doesn't matter to me. I'd rather have the freehand look than have it cut out on a jig. You could make a jig for that or a router and let it all perfect. Cut it out on a bandsaw. But for me, I struggled with my little 16 inch drapper that come off Noah's Ark basically. But it does the job, it serves its purpose. And you notice there, we've done our little grooves all the way round. Now that's just going to be enough for when we come with our Dremel and plenty of sanding drums. Bags are going to use a fair few of those. They come in different sizes after you pop it on there and pop that into your Dremel. And the idea is we'll get this started up and later we're going to sand all the way down. And as we come into those little end branches, like I said before, we'll get a nice smooth and we can just sand it. Get some sandpaper on, get the drum on, give it a nice bit of shape. We'll even throw in a bit of mouse sander just to finish it off. Okay, and the belt sander behind us if the mood takes us. Right, let's start shaping this and then we'll be heading towards the finishing line.
that's enough sanding down and general tidying up for me. It's a good solid piece is this one, so we've had no issues with any breakages anyway. And you can see from that we've got some nice curves going down and everything's nice and smooth. And we've got a nice shape to it all and I'm happy with that one so far. So there's not a lot left to do to this project apart from we're going to put a bit of boiled linseed oil on. You can use Danish oil, tongue oil, whatever you want. Just to darken this wood down and hopefully get that grain to come back. I've just got it on three little scrap pieces of wood now. Just keep it off the dusty table. And then we'll cover it all in with the boiled linseed oil, like I say. I do like this on my projects, for those that's watched previous ones. And it is just a simple case of brushing it on and then we'll wipe it off with a cloth. And it's subtle enough. I have looked at the uh, wood stains I have. One was too dark and the other, I literally just hadn't got enough of it. So we're going to go straight for this today. Literally cover the whole thing like that. Not forgetting to do all the side walls as well. So we want to get right down, get all those side bits done like so. Give it a nice good soaking. And once it's all soaked in, we'll give it a wipe down, should I say, just before then. And once it's all nicely dry, we won't be far off towards the finishing line. So I'll continue with this. Basically just put plenty on. Get it all nicely finished. And then when we come back, we'll see what the next stage is. Right, it's a day or so later. Everything's nice and dry. And that's just enough on there. Just to give a bit of colour to it. Obviously, it's a lot darker on the back with the original stain or whatever they use on the wood at the time. Recycled table, this one, remember? So we've got a nice project out of it. And for now, we're more or less towards the finishing line. And you could leave that like that. I'm not going to do anything else with this if needed. And that litter will just hang up on the wall like so. But I'm going to spray me a bit of varnish on. You know that. I do like a little bit of a shine on. Not so much to protect it. This is an indoor piece, remember? So it doesn't really matter. But it's a nice sunny day, so I'll go outside and hang this from the line and give it a nice spray and try and get inside some of these side areas. We won't cover it all, I don't think. And that'll be enough just to darken it down slightly. And just to let us know, like so, look, that we've give it a little spray round. So I will go outside and do this now, and when we come back, we'll be heading towards the finishing line. Okay, so we've sprayed our varnish on there, and that's just enough to give it a nice little shine for me. It's hard to see inside the shed here. We'll have a look outside in the lovely sunshine today. But it's just enough to give it a nice little coating and you've had a go at this now you have a lot of options with these projects originally i was going to put a backer on there and inlay all these sections with multicolored resin we might leave that for another project now this one itself this is going to be a wedding gift in two or three months time and i will come back and actually just engrave the person's names on there the two names and i'm going to put the date along the bottom there so it's like it's been carved into the trunk of the tree but as far as this video goes this little project is finished and once i've done my engraving i might inlay it with a bit of paint or something and then spray it all again just to finish it off nicely obviously for hanging purposes you can literally just put a little nail and just hook it onto one of your top pieces there and that will hang nicely and you'll have the color of the wallpaper behind or the wall coming through so this little project is finished for now, but I will come back in a couple of months once we finalise the dates and get the dates on there for the happy couple when they get married. So it's recycled oak, we're going to call this one. It's 21 inches by 21 inches, about three, three quarters of an inch thick. We cut it all out with a Pegasus number five spiral blade. We did use a router for a matter of minutes just to go around that outer edge to make that little cutting. And then it was just sanding drums, sanding drums on the Dremel with a flexi cable. 
And then we sprayed it with a nice varnish. Before that, we put the boiled linseed oil on. You know you're going to see that in most of my videos. And that's it. This little project is finished. So, tree of life. It will be a wedding gift. Once I put the names of the bride and groom in there. And the nice date. Thank you very much for watching.